What's up everybody? Kent's Garage Jim here. This is the Fitness Gear Pro HR 500. HR stands for half rack. I got this almost three years ago at Dick's Sporting Good on uh, Black Friday for I think $250. Normally it sells like $350. Just the rack alone, not the weights. The weights I got for $180. That's 300 pounds of weights and the barbell, which is a 45 pound Olympic barbell. Great buy, I think at the time it was brand new. I can tell you about the wear and tear and what to expect with this throughout the years. I also had purchased a bench with it at the time, which was really great. I just had to upgrade it and uh, upgrade it to a secondhand bench that I thought was a little bit more sturdy, could hold some more weight. First thing I want to talk about are the weights. Uh, now this isn't actually the review of the rack itself, but the Fitness Gear weights there's only one small problem, if it's a problem at all, and it's that the 45 pound plate is actually a little bit smaller than other 45 pound plates that I have. I've got VTX and Troy uh, plates, and they, they both seem to be like a couple of inches bigger than this one. And uh, that only makes a difference when I'm deadlifting and, and those kind of things. The fitness gear plate will not touch the ground, as opposed to the other ones which are more like the base weights. So the reason that this is great is because of all the, uh, how many different ways that you can adjust it. Uh, as you see, there's the long bars at the bottom. That's good for catching. It's the catch rack. So if you're doing bench press and uh, you can't get it up all the way if you're alone or you've got a spotter who can't pull it up off of you, you can just lower it down and kind of escape out of there. If you're doing incline press, same thing. Uh, squats, I like to go all the way down to that catch rack hit it and then come back up again. Um, maybe not a good idea, I'm not sure, but uh, if I know that I can't press up the weight, I can always slowly go down with it and let it sit on that, on that long bar catch rack. If you look to the top, you can see pull-up bars. There's a wide grip pull-up bars. Then inward, there's the inward grip pull-up bars. And then you can even go up to the top, uh, to the gray part with the Fitness Gear logo and do an inward grip chin. I've seen this thing pop up on Craigslist uh, probably about once a year, maybe twice a year, and the price range is usually about $100 to $250. It just depends on the person, just depends on what they're asking for. So let's talk about wear and tear of this thing. One thing that I was not really a fan of, and I'll walk it over there, is the tape and the placement of the tape. The tape is actually facing the catch rack and uh, and the spot bar here and uh, I feel like it could have gone along the side over here where there's no involvement and then it would have lasted longer instead of getting messed up like how it is second thing as you can see is the rubber on this is kind of worn off over time and this even pops off right there due to shifting of barbells and whatnot so you got a lot of weight on your barbells you shift it just a little bit this is what's going to happen. I think it probably, right here, it probably just should have been all metal, but I guess you could always strip it off. And these things sell for, uh, I think, something like $20 to $30, brand new, at the Dick Sporting Goods website. Same thing over here. It's not just one side. It's that side as well. Though I don't have as much wear and tear on the long bars, just due to the fact that I'm not shifting a whole lot of weight on that. I'm just, usually I just lay it down on there when I'm doing shrugs or uh, when I'm trying to escape out of, out of the way of the bar. As a side note, I thought that this thing was going to come with some dip rack attachments or something like that. I went on eBay and I bought these for about $40, which was a horrible idea because first of all, they do not fit. And second of all, if they did fit, uh, I would be putting a lot of weight on the sides of the racks and it would really just rip up the paint. So, not a good idea there. Don't do that. I ended up buying a secondhand dip rack over here, which uh, is very sturdy compared to what I could have gotten as an attachment on the half rack. Okay, so I just reviewed the half rack 500. Guess what came before that? There was the 100, 200, 300, 400, and guess what there is now? There's the HR 600. And I'm sure it's going to go 7, 800, 900, all the way into infinity, right? So, of course, they got to improve their bells and their whistles every once in a while. So the 2017 version 
is the HR600. And a few neat little features that they have is at the very top rack where people do pull-ups. Now the pull-up uh, attachments, they can come apart and they can switch to a couple of different other holes to make it closer or more wide. And another, another thing is at the J-hook. So the J-hook has another section and this is for the top rack to fall down into that section. So if you're a shorter person, you can actually do pull-ups in a lower position, or perhaps you can even put that into a very low position to where you can do dips, like how I was trying to do. I, I still don't know about that. I don't know if that's gonna be a good thing to do. I tried to do some, uh, some pull-ups on it, and it didn't feel quite as sturdy to me as the HR500, because these things are not in place. They're not uh, really as stable I guess is the 500, though it's more functional, if that makes any sense. So it goes around, uh, it can, it can uh, be switched up, can fall into the lower J hooks, but uh, with all the rattling, it makes me feel like it could be, I guess, a little bit easier to have wear and tear on it as opposed to the HR 500. So take your pick on that. Um, I, uh, I think that the bells and whistles being updated is a pretty cool thing. And uh, looking forward to the other ones in the future. Hey, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.